Hey now, Brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, today we're going to look at an expansion for the game Dark Tales. This is the Snow White expansion. As the name implies, it is not only going to add Snow White to the deck, it's also going to add the other cast of characters, the uh, the Evil Queen, the Prince, the Dwarves, and so on, as well as a bunch of new item tokens that have to do with their individual stories and a new setting card as well. Let me go ahead and give you a brief look at what comes in this expansion, then we're going to come back I'll let you know what I think of it. Alright, let me just show you the new stuff that comes in the Snow White expansion for Dark Tales. Uh, it's pretty much everything here. The only thing that uh, comes in the set that is not pictured are more Victory Point chips. Just because, I, I, I mean, whatever. They're the same exact Victory Point chips as before. They're just giving you more of them because you have more cards and it's potentially possible to get a lot more points because of the cards in this game. Uh, so you have a bunch of tokens here. You have these uh, Laced Bodice tokens, uh, Poison Apple, Burning Shoes, uh, Comb. I think some of this is based on either like a really old version of Snow White or they're just making stuff up. But uh, <laughs> those are the new items. You also come with an extra couple of gold coins because uh, some of the new cards uh, have more to do with coins so they need to be more plentiful. Uh, now, before we get to like the main cards uh, from the main deck, there are two new setting cards that come in the set. One of them is actually just a replacement card for the Iron Army B setting card from uh, the original Dark Tales, and all I can tell that it does is that it impre increases the point spread. Um, so I believe in the original, the first player that's ranked gets 10 points, and now it's going to be 15 points instead. If you're not familiar with this, you are essentially adding up the sum of um, cards and hand and gold coins, and then ranking the players. Now you just get more points for having done so. The top part, we're turning in swords to... and. Um, Sets of swords and villains and or males is going to get you the same amount of points. The other new setting card is specific to Snow White um, in that it's... Uh, well, they're both specific to Snow White. That's why it's got the Poison Apple on it. You can only use them when you're using the Snow White expansion cards. And by the way, oh, let me take a step back then. You can mix in all the different Snow White cards that you want, but it will increase the length of the game. You can take some out if you want to have a shorter game. But if you are playing with the Snow White cards, you have to play with these special setting cards. Um, in, in this case, if you choose to use the B setting army, Iron Army card. Anyways, the A setting card, the uh, Snow White card, just tells you what you're going to do with these new items. So the if you have the Lace Bodice plus the... Uh, let me go ahead and focus a little bit on there. The text is so tiny on these cards. Uh, if you discard one of the Lace Bodices and any female in play, you score two victory points. If you discard the Comb together with Snow White, you get a coin and a victory point. If you discard the Poison Apple, it's with, uh, you get rid of every Snow White and you get three victory points. If you discard the Burning Shoes, you get rid of every Queen and get three points for every one of those Queens that you get rid of. And of course, there's the requisite weird story blur. Uh, so let's go ahead and go on to the new cards that come in for the main deck. And of course, we'll start off with... Snow White herself. She's going to get you uh, a variable amount of points. Uh, she has a continuous ability. You score a victory point at the end of your turn, but if the prince is in play, you also get an additional victory point. Here is the Evil Queen. Uh, let's get this a little bit better on camera. The Evil Queen says that you take an item of your choice from the supply, either the Lace Bodice, the Comb, or the Poison Apple, and then you may play an item. The Prince uh, you get to take a gold coin and a burning shoe from the supply, and then you may play an item, sort of similar to the Evil Queen. Uh, then as a continuous ability, if Snow White is in play, he's going to grant you a victory point, so they really work well off of each other. When you play the Dwarves, you get a number of victory points equal to the Dwarves that are already in play, including that one. The Dwarves' house is a location. You score a victory point for each Dwarf in play, and then discard a victory point if Snow White is in play. I don't know why that is exactly. I guess I don't like her. Magic Mirror is an event. You can look at the top two cards of the deck, add one to your hand, or remove the other one from play face down. You may play one additional card this turn. And then finally, you have the Glass Coffin, the other event in this expansion. You take a Snow White from the discard pile and add her to your hand. So that's it. I mean, there's more cards in that. There's more of each, uh, multiple different cards for each of each type of card. But that is essentially it. You decide whether you're going to play with it or not, shuffle it in, potentially take some of the uh, base set cards out to make the game shorter, and then, then just make sure you know what the new items do. That's the Snow White expansion for Dark Tales. Let's get to my final thoughts. 
If you watched my original review of Dark Tales, you know that I like the game. It's not like the greatest game ever, but it's a light, uh, sort of addictive card game of just trying to get as many points as possible, and it looks fantastic. And of course, with the Snow White expansion, the trend of it looking good definitely continues. And the game does not change drastically. Most of the cards, you just shuffle in, no problem. Uh, it, there, you know, you can change the game length by taking out more cards because if you're adding in more cards to the deck, the game end condition is to end the game when the deck runs out of cards. You're obviously going to make the game longer, so you can take out some cards if you want to. That might screw up some of the combos that rely on other cards showing up, but it's not a tremendously huge deal. Now, uh, the game also has a new setting card that you put out that tells you what some of the new items do as well, uh, and none of them. They function mostly the same as the items would in the original based on whatever it says on the setting card. So in this case, the burning shoe, I don't, th this is all based on the, the tale of Snow White, but like twisted a little bit, or maybe it's based more uh, faithfully on the original. I don't know. Like I said in my original review, I don't care about fairy tales. But there's things like you use a burning shoe, kill a bunch of evil queens, and then you're able to get a bunch of points and so on. It's still the same basic mechanics of Dark Tales. It's just that you've got more items and more cards and they interact the same way just with different cards now i like it i like you know it doesn't change my my view of dark tales and i think you can just shuffle these in and start playing right away i will say however that my major complaint about dark tales was that it could be uh, very very luck driven and it can be swingy as well you just get really really screwed up on some hands of cards and other players can just get a huge almost in or insurmountable lead not just almost about it I think that Snow White exasper the Snow White expansion exacerbates that a bit. Because while you're adding in more combos, you're also adding in more potential to just make a ton of points while someone else didn't draw those cards and therefore is not making a ton of points. It sounds like I'm being very simplistic about that, but this is a very simplistic game. So if you have a bad hand, if you don't have the killer cards, if you're not doing uh, getting automatic points from combinations of Snow White and the Prince, like right from the beginning of the game, as it happened in one of our games, then you're going to fall behind the other players. At the same time, there are a lot of card-killing cards in this set, as there was, was in Dark Tales, but it seems more pronounced in Snow White because there's so many cards that kill Snow White or that take the prince. And that adds, uh, you know, there's always been to take that element in this game, even in the original set, but now it seems even more pronounced, so it can be a little bit meaner than uh, if you play with just the core cards. Now, do I, again, do I think that this uh, means that it's a bad expansion? No, but I do think it's an expansion that you may not necessarily want to play with all the time. I keep mine separate because it's not that it's that much more complicated, but it's just got a little bit more bite to it, a little more randomness and a little bit more length to the game unless you take out some cards. So if I was teaching this game to someone for the first time, I'd say, let's just play with the core cards now we'll consider putting in the Snow White cards. But still, more for this game is definitely going to be the key because the, as light as it is and as fun as it is, it, I could see it getting repetitive at a certain point, even with the setting cards. But if they keep doing expansions like this, which add new setting cards, which freshen things up, new items, new cards to put into the deck, I think they might have a winner on their hands. It's just they have to iron out some of the rough edges of balance and take that. If they're ever going to, maybe they're perfectly happy with the weight and the silliness and frivolity of how the game is at this point. But still good, decent expansion, good expansion I'd even say. That is the Snow White expansion for Dark Tales from DVGOG. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.